Hi everyone! Hello, hello! As per Fariba's request, I'll be showing my bullet journal today. And if that's not your vibe, that's okay, and I'll see you back next week for more watercolor goodness. So I mentioned in my previous reverse art haul video about having set up my whole bullet journal for 2024, and Fariba asked if I could show it. I'll basically be going through this like a flip through video and commenting about certain things as they come up. If I mention any products or videos, I will link them all below. Alright, so this is the official bullet journal made by Lorstrom. I considered between blush pink and black, and while I do like the blush pink more, I chose to go with black because I know it would just drive me crazy if the pink got dirty, which would most likely happen since it's a light color and I'm not really the best at keeping things clean or pristine. Anyway, you'll see here that I have a tab that says Tracker. I use my tracker on a daily basis, so I find it convenient to have that tab there for quick access. As I have previously mentioned, I started this bullet journal in September last year, so this front part of this journal was all 2023. While I did post an October setup, I quickly found that I didn't use some pages, so today's video will be focused on what I've set up for 2024. After December 2023, I basically left a blank journal spread and started 2024 with this future log setup. You'll see right away that I've used stickers. Yes, I did not do any art in this bullet journal, and that's because I hardly have time to paint as it is. So my number one point in setting up 2024 was to use stickers. I also used my Tombow Dusk Pink brush pen to make the borders. I find it just the right color of pink that's light but not so bright, and almost muted but not there yet. I specifically chose this phone sticker for December as a self-reminder because towards the end of the year, I like to go through and purge my phone of any unnecessary things taking up storage. And then we have January. Again, more stickers, and that is a cherry blossom themed washi tape. You'll see that this is blank because I filmed this just before the new year. I put the habits that I want to track along the left and tick them off according to the date along the top. Oh right, I should say, I've gone straight to the monthly tracker because I don't use monthly calendar style setups. You'll see that for the month of January, my main point was to use my cherry blossom washi tape, so I stuck with the pink theme. And then I'm very much a to-do list type of person, so I've basically put together weekly setups where I jot down what I need to do on those specific days. And anything that isn't too time sensitive, like editing or filming for certain videos, I can list those tasks in the rolling weekly section. For the month of February, of course, I had to go with a Valentine's theme. Just one sticker and simple heart motifs. You'll see that I tend to switch up my weekly setups, and that's just because I like to spice things up a little bit, so that it's not all the same and boring. For February, I had several of these stickers, so I just picked my color theme from them. Red, a lighter red, and black. For March, I decided to change from Sanrio to some Pokemon. Togepi is one of my favorite Pokemons. There's so much color going on already, so I chose to go with this neutral tan brown color theme. Oh, and here's Jigglypuff, another one of my favorite Pokemons. I've collected so many stickers over several years, so I'm finally glad to be able to use them. It definitely took me several nights to sort through which stickers I wanted to use for each month. And now, back to Sanrio in April. Still pink for now, but I used other tones of pink. April is near springtime, so I went with a more vibrant pink combo. Oh, here's Pom Pom Purin! If you know me, yellow isn't a color I particularly like, but a couple years ago I discovered that this character is based off of a custard pudding. The brown hat is the caramel sauce. Isn't that cool? Again, I looked at the stickers to know what color combo to use. For this month of May, I went with yellow and brown. And now for the month of June, not much thought here, I just wanted to use my Card Capter Secure stickers. And overall, it had lots of pink and corals, so I chose some warm pink colors for the lettering. July is what I'd call summer, so I chose Cinema Roll because I knew no matter what, I would use blue for summer. 
there's some light blue and dark blue color combos. You'll see that for all the months, I would put stickers along the tops, bottoms, or corners of the pages. I find that this gives the page a nice little cute decor, yet it's also not in the way of when I write notes. August is more of this Tombow Dusk pink. I have these blank spreads after every few months, just in case I have a custom collection I want to add. Sanrio's Kuromi feels like a bit of an evil character to me, so I chose to go with her for September, essentially preparing myself for Halloween in October. Kuromi is a bit of black and purple, but I don't want bright purple, so I went with a lighter tone. The Zebra Mild Liners came really handy for a lot of these setups as I was able to choose lighter and somewhat muted color palettes. And now we have October! Initially, I wanted to go with a dark and light orange color theme, or maybe an orange and brown. But my stickers led me to use black and orange, which I didn't really mind. I drew on this border myself using Ohuhu's water-based markers. I quite like them for the more vibrant mid-tone colors. We're almost there! Here is November! Obviously, we don't get snow here in Bangkok, so snowy winters are something I think about a lot. You'll see that the stickers are predominantly these light blue and pink colors. So I went with that. I will be showing some of my custom collections after this, so please don't click out just yet. December is the last month and of course, it has to be Christmas, right? I wanted to use red and green as that's the typical Christmas color combo, but it'd be too much so I went with a mint green and another shade of pink. You'll see that this spread I used blue because I chose for the sticker to lead me and I didn't think the red and green theme would fit, so blue it was. And then I have two completely empty spreads after December here because I tend to do a lot of random planning towards the end of the year. I thought this would be a fitting space. And now for my custom collections. I have here my medical chart set up. One column is for the symptoms I experienced and the other column is for me to take notes of the doctor's diagnosis and given treatment. I'm getting older each year and I find it useful to have a record on hand. I don't get sick often myself, so I think two pages is enough, though I did leave some space here as well in case. And on the far right there, it's health related too, so I have a narrow chart to track my weight and my period cycles. Then a whole spread all about food. The difference between these two pages is that the food page on the left is for foods that I want to eat, whether I buy it from outside or cook it myself. Maybe I saw something online or someone said something, or I remembered a dish I had in the past. And then the page on the right is for dishes or food items that I want to add the recipe to my recipe book. And this spread is, well, some of you may laugh, but I don't have Spotify or any of those music service subscriptions. So I do want to write it down in case I want to listen to it again on a random day in the future. And here is my skincare page. It's kind of all over the place, but hopefully you can see that there are two columns. I'm allergic to a lot of skincare products, so this is my way of keeping track of what works for me and how much they last for. Last but not least, arguably my most favorite spread of this whole journal, the package tracker. This basically tracks what packages I expect to arrive. And that's it! That's the end of my 2024 bullet journal setup flip through. This channel isn't focused on bullet journaling, so I do apologize for not having filmed any parts of the setup. This is mainly for me to use and abuse to organize parts of my life. A lot of it is repetitive, but that's what works for me. To summarize what I did, or my tips for those who want to sort of recreate a similar setup. 1. Stickers. If you can find theme stickers, it would be best for things to be cohesive. Or if you have a sticker stash like me, just choose ones that go together either by theme or by color. 2. Washi tapes. 
Honestly, this is just like stickers but in tape form. I think it's great for giving a page or a spread a little accent, or it could be a good page separator as well. 3. Color theme. Making sure you stick to a couple colors is a great way to not get too messy and keep things look well designed. And 4. Keep it simple. You'll see that I did not do any fancy lettering or calligraphy. I just went with a few simple lettering ideas that I knew I could do well and stuck with it. Alright, that's it then. I hope this has inspired someone somehow. As always, thank you so much for watching till the end, despite this not being my usual content. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.